Hi Vasundra. Hi. Welcome to Sudhi Podius channel again. Thank you. It's lovely to be here with you. So Vasundra, uh, you've always kept doing some new things, you know, in the world of music and you've been at it for years now. you know besides being a fantastic singer you know you conduct drum circles for corporates and many other social communities etc and uh, we just found out that you're dropping as it's called an nft that's right <laughs> uh people in india have finally managed to understand what an nft is <laughs> so, what is this nft business now so if you could educate our viewers and you know what exactly this is as a concept and what have you done in this space well um an nft is uh, basically what is called a non fungible token which is a financial security consisting of some kind of di- digital data that's stored in the blockchain um a blockchain is a form of a distributed ledger that is completely transparent um to everybody that's in that particular Blo- you know in the blockchain so whenever there's a transaction that happens anywhere in the blockchain everybody in the blockchain knows about it or it's you know it's common information for anyone to view so so an nft is basically a piece of data that is um associated with a very unique piece of say digital art or an asset as they call it um so you can say that an nft artwork is a digital asset which is a a collectible or a unique or a non transferable piece of digital art it applies mainly to uh, the digital um art uh, you know uh, universe but some people are also using nfts to kind of um they're kind of crossing over in terms of they're doing they're making these uh, collectible digital pieces of art and also they are making um you know art that can be like a physical piece that goes with an nft so you know it's really up to one's own creativity how they want to put a piece of tech art and a piece of like a like a physical piece of art together and sort of make make it a, a an offering that's attractive to uh, somebody that's uh, you know on the blockchain or uh in that um, whole universe of nfts and crypto and all of that um so it really depends on you know how the artist wants to put themselves out there and you know how much value one uh, uh, as a buyer one will sort of expect in terms of uh, you know owning a piece of digital art which is an nft so thank you for that simple explanation that's a good question <laughs> yeah i mean one can go very deep in it but on sudhi podcast channel we are having a separate uh, education series on blockchain and nft so people can watch that to understand it deeper so yeah. but in simple terms you explained it well uh, vasundra you have come up with something known as a dumru uh, nft so can you tell us more about that why did you name it dumru how was it created what is your role in that etc So you know during the pandemic there was uh, an open call to artists from di- different mediums so it wasn't necessarily only musicians that were on this uh, collective um there were playwrights there were theater people there were actors there were um m- filmmakers there were um, digital artists visual artists and musicians i was a musician <laughs> on the co- on the creative collective um and we were um asked to create something called a rad bot a rad bot is nothing but a radical bot so if you have to look at um you know how business is run today you will find that bots have a very um integral part in how businesses are engaging with their uh consumer base or their customer base however you want to put it but here the art ask is um how do we move away from a transactional bot which is what's out there in the world you know in the internet right now everybody's got a bot on their website that's interacting with their base how do you move away from a transactional bot um and give it a little more personality or soul or attitude or whatever it is um personality being the keyword 
So how would that be? And then if you put it into the context of social justice in the sense of we were asked to represent underrepresented voices. So that was really a choice that was placed on us, each, each and every one of us. Um, so if, for example, one of the uh, creators on our collective decided that their bot should be an autistic child who's on the spectrum, underrepresented voice, you know? Um, or uh, one of the other artists, uh, international artists that was on the uh, collective decided that she wanted um, a dead, Jew from uh, from the time of the Nazis. So her bot is a skull because all of us have seen, you know, all of these horrific images of the Holocaust and for them it's real, you know, living in Germany and things like that, it's still real. So for her, it was, you know, that was the underrepresented voice of the Jews that died. They never got to say um, all the things that they might have had to, wanted to say. So like that, there are various different um, interpretations of underrepresented voices that each of the creators have brought forward. One of the other creators has, uh, um, has made a bot called Ankh Mari Jan, who's, a <laughs> who's from a brothel. You know, it's like she's, uh, she's a Nachwali and she has attitude and she's always flirting and winking and, <laughs> you know. So, but they are underrepresented voices too, because you know they, they played such a big and important role in the uh, independence movement of India, but we never talk about it. They were the empowered women in the time of Indian independence that went out there and uh, you know were, were messengers, spies, all kinds of things they did. Um, so like that. So my bot, uh, you know the, the underrepresented voice part of it, came to me from my experience of being a facilitator. So, you know, my, the little bit of background that I need to give you there is that from being uh, someone who was performing to big audiences on stage, I transitioned to somebody that was facilitating musical experiences for people who may or may not have had any kind of musical training, exposure. Um, so, you know, in a sense, um, if I have to put it, it's, using music to empower people to express themselves musically, believing that every single one of us has some music in us and that we can reach our unique optimum through you know, a facilitated process. So that's really what I do as a facilitator now. And in that journey of being this facilitator and helping people, the first thing I always encounter is that a lot of people say, oh, I'm not musical or I don't have a voice or I don't, you know, I can't sing or uh, I don't have rhythm. So a lot, so, so many of these uh, narratives of, um, you know, I can't, I won't, I, you know, all of that would come to the fore. And I kind of thought about it and I said, you know, why do so many people think that they're not musically inclined or they're not capable of music? And um, I realized that a lot of us are shut down. You know, it may be that you were sent to a music class when you were a child and your teacher told you, oh, you can't hold a note or you can't hold a rhythm or someone laughed at you and said, no, you, you know, <laughs> please don't, you know, don't even bother trying this. So that's it's a very deep, um, deep, deep seated trauma for some of us. So then when you, uh, you know, put a musical instrument in front of somebody that's been shut up, shut down that way, they just, you know, they, they recoil in a sense and they say, oh, no, no, I can't do this. So for me, that was uh, an underrepresented voice, which was coming up over and over again in my real world experience of trying to facilitate um, music and rhythm in every and any and everyone. So that was the underrepresented voice. So I decided that my rad bot, which was going to be a bot that addresses some kind of an underrepresented voice with compassion, empathy, and soul, this was what I wanted. Because, you know, it's what's calling me at the moment. It's really what's, you know. So that's what I decided that my program for this rad bot was going to be about. It was about empowering people to um, experiment with their own musicality. So that, uh, you know, so Damru is actually 
a bot that um, talks about the importance of music in a world like today, where we're all so much more isolated than before. She talks about human connection uh, using music as a medium. She talks about how uh, you can heal with music, um, how you know using the voice is one of the most powerful healing modalities that you have for your physical body as well as your soul. So if you you know delve into uh, music and healing, um, it really you know you, you'll be surprised at how much uh, internal and mental healing that you can uh, do for yourself with music itself. So my bot Damru is uh, one that talks about all of this. And so when you ask her stuff, she actually learns every single time she has an interaction with somebody, she learns from that interaction. And then with the help of artificial intelligence, she's able to get better and better and better at having conversations with people in this regard. So, you know, it's, it's such an interesting uh, concept. And this concept was brought together by uh, Dara.network, which is an artistic platform for multi-disciplinary uh, artists, you know, for collaboration and things like that. So this is really one of the examples of how different artists from different mediums can come together to create something meaningful. And for me, the attraction of doing something like this to, to make an NFT and to be in the space of the NFTs from the point of view of a musician was to bring value also. Because you see, you know, that there are lots of cats bobbing their heads. <laughs> and that's considered a big NFT that's selling at millions, millions of dollars. I'm like, what's the what's the value there, you know? So I want I really want it for the first thing that I do as an NFT for it to be meaningful, for it to speak. Uh, of something that's that's that means something to me, and this really was um, a project that did all of that at the first go, and that's why you know Damru exists, and I hope that people will interact with her when the uh, when the ratbot drops, and that I you know I hope that there's value and you know. Nice. The the thought behind creating this NFT seems to be quite pure and quite. Uh... Uh, well thought out, you know, because of your own experiences as a facilitator, like you just said. So, how does one use this NFT? Now, see, I mean, for lesser mortals like us, uh, <laughs> how do we kind of engage into this Dumbru NFT? Uh, whose face do we see? Where do we interact with? And when do we use this NFT in our daily lives? Only when we are kind of feeling lonely? Or how does it work if you could, you know, kind of... So how do you use a piece of art, Aditya? Like, for example, the painting that's on the wall behind you, how do you use it? You look at it, you enjoy it. It's an artwork. That's true. Like you just said, you know, artificial intelligence is involved. So when you look at a painting, it's just maybe you think or you take yourself into that space and imagine yourself into that house that you see there or you know, something like that. But when it comes to this rat bot of Damru, how does one use it? How does one get it? I mean, if you could, yeah. if you have some details on that. Yeah, to um, experience uh, the radbots, you could log into Dara, which is a social platform, like I said, where communities create capital. And um, as the project, you know, was conceptualized by Dara.network, the bots are hosted there because it's their project. And they're being dropped as NFTs and will be available to bid. So how does one use it? You interact with uh, the bot. So for example, once it's out there um, and you bid for it, you get uh, X number of interactions with the bot. That's what you're buying. You're buying uh, this, this piece of digital art that has been conceptualized and brought into existence by an artist like myself. There are you know, a whole bunch of others who have, like I said, part of the collective. So there are all these different rad bots. And so when you bid and you buy, you get to buy X number of interactions. So you get to ask those many questions to the bot. And the answers of these questions are like, uh, you know, although we have programmed these bots, they have a mind of their own now because they are connected to AI. So they just work with the principles that we program them with. 
you know, with, with a simple text um, program that we wrote uh, them to be based upon. But then beyond that, they're using AI and whatever the responses that are coming back to whatever questions you have asked the bot are all based on the personality we designed the bot with. But then that bot is its own person now and is, is taking information wherever it can find it on the net. Um, so, you know, even we don't have you know, control in that sense over now what the bots are going to say to you when you have these uh, uh, interactions with them. So what you're buying are the interactions with the bots and, uh, you know, to see. And I guess you, you, if you buy um, the NFT, I think you get to access the program. You get to see the program that we wrote to understand why uh, the bot is behaving in a particular way or is answering questions in a particular way. So if you could uh, share any technical details in the sense, uh, did you just record your voice or were your expressions also recorded uh, visually? Um, so I selected an image um, with a lot, you know, after a lot of trial and error. Uh, there are certain uh, parameters that we had to keep in mind to make the video animation as smooth as possible. And we had to, you know, work with different programs and the lip, lip movement and the gestures and the eye movement and the images. And as far as the um, voice goes, it's a simple Google voice program that we used to give voices to the bot. We, we each decided, you know, their uh, intonation, their tonality, uh, you know, where in the world they are from so that they have a particular kind of accent. I'm too rooted in India, Aditya, you know. <laughs> so my bot has got a very uh, Indian English accent um, and but then she's decided that her name is not Damru, her name is Damru. She says my name is Damru. <laughs> but it's been pretty exciting to see how they've come into their own, you know. Uh, even though you make these basic um, um, decisions, like you know what they look like, how their lips move, how do they, you know, what gestures do they make, um, and then what their voice sounds like, you know. So, so essentially, um, your input here in this case would be uh, the feelings that you have given to the bot. Is that right? Yes. Not, not your voice, not the ah, ooh, um. So you won't hear it sing in your voice. No, no. And you won't, you know, it, it's not my face either. Because, you know, for the simple reason that somebody, when someone looks at me, they feel like, uh, you know, I'm... I'm a pro at music or something like that, and I'm better better than them. And so kind of put themselves down a notch, you know? So that's not what I wanted as far, because here's something, we're, we're trying to empower people through this. So I don't, I don't necessarily think that my face would have been a good um, idea in this particular context. So this is a different face. Damru is, you know, a, a different personality. It's not, fashioned like Vasundra Das or anything like that. So that people feel like, oh, she's just, you know, she's just another uh, being in existence. Yeah. Right. So I think the best way to understand what this whole thing is, is to log on to the Dara network and experience yeah. ourselves what uh, the interactions are and how it learns, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, actually, so uh, you can go to www.dara.network slash Damru, D-A-M-R-O-O, um, and that, that will take you to Damru. Great. So, Vasundra, thanks for sharing the details with us on this new avenue that you've gotten yourself into. And we hope that uh, people and musicians also learn from, you know, kind of your foresight that you have in terms of doing new things and getting into new ventures and speaking of musicians Aditya I think it's important to talk about you know music as NFTs and why um, it's you know it's radical <laughs> to release music as an NFT right um, because I, I think that for way too long uh, other people have make, made uh, the money off of the musician so when you look at um, NFTs and how you know 
how to release music right now a lot of people are just releasing songs as nfts songs with um, basic animated videos or things like that as nfts but there the so the merit in that is that every single time there's a transaction of your music or your music changes hands um you get to earn based on whatever is your um you know your legal ownership contract that you have created that nft so it brings a value back to you and it it allows you to earn off of your uh creativity not just once but over and over over and over and over again every time it changes hands and for me that's how it, yes yes but uh, it's not happening for whatever reason you know now people are streaming music so where's the value of music anymore so if we want to bring back uh, the value of music maybe i'm not saying this is the way that it's going to uh, change the world or anything like that maybe we can be creative in terms of how we um, you know uh, share our music with the world we don't need to be giving it away for free on youtube or you know or giving it away um, putting it on a streaming site immediately just to get likes this is something that uh, came up for me in a very big way when uh, we worked on the shao sen project is that i think i spent more time on social media uh, post the release of the project than i ever spent on like and we spent 3 years researching and doing the music um but i had to spend way more time promoting it on social media and i was like this just doesn't make sense there has to be a better way and i feel like as the world of nfts evolves the story of music as nfts is evolving every single day and it's a really important thing for musicians to be in the know uh, of what's happening in the nft world so that they um are able to hold on to what they value the most which is their own music right and how it's viewed how it's consumed and how they can earn from it through their lifetime so i feel that it's a very important thing that we as musicians need to consider and not ignore or not say that oh you know it's this is yes it's a whole bunch of work again it's like when music went digital and you had to promote your own music on facebook and youtube and things like that we were all moaning about it and saying oh my god you know not only do we have to make the music but we also have to do this um it's going to be a, a a difficult process you know you have to build communities you have to be on discord you have to there's a whole other ecosystem that comes with uh, uh being a creator of, of an nft but if it's going to bring you the earning that you deserve it's worth um checking out is all i'm saying great on that note uh, asunda thank you again for spending time with us and sharing your experiences and uh, hope to catch up with you soon thank you